Hello and welcome to a special bonus episode of the Park Stop podcast. What you're about to hear was originally released as a Park Stop premium podcast available for Patreon supporters for as little as a dollar a month. While we were doing this episode, we thought, you know, this would be a really good uh, public episode, especially with the visuals. So if you're listening, check it out on YouTube and you'll see all the different things that we're talking about. And check out patreon.com slash theme park stop for more exclusive podcasts. Enjoy the show. Not well. So today we're going to be talking about <laughs> today we're going to be talking about um, theme park experiences in VR, uh, which could be the future of ways to experience attractions that closed. Yay. Old stuff. So we're going to talk about robot butlers, kids, at least once. <laughs> Well, we'll start with that one with Horizons Resurrected, because that one's still in in development. That one's actually still happening, which is pretty cool. And but they haven't done the robot butler yet, have they? No, I haven't seen a robot butler. I think the last time I checked it out, they have is the chef in there. I think the chef is in there. Might be. I haven't the robot chef. I haven't looked in a while, to be honest. I mean, we were just discussing this the other day, so I, I haven't looked at a lot of these in a while. But there was an update recently, and they put out like a, a 360 video. So even if you don't download the program, so what this is, is it's a standalone like old school .exe program that you just walk kind of. You kind of push your arrow keys like it's you're walking into the old Horizons ride from Epcot, and you get into the ride vehicle and you just experience the ride. And it's got all the sound um, and, and music and everything and. They they fleshed out a lot of the environments, but they're still missing a lot of like the animatronic characters and all the foreground stuff, some of the video screens. But bit by bit, they are recreating, painstakingly recreating the ride from scratch. Which is awesome because I love that ride and World of Motion. I mean, you could watch a YouTube video, but you're beholden to the technology of the time period. You know, whatever VHS giant camera someone lugged around with them that day at Epcot. And you can only look at whatever they looked at. But with the VR experience, you can, you know, move your camera around. You can, if you're watching the, even if you're watching the YouTube version, you can still, you know, move left and right. But if you have a VR headset or an Oculus or whatever, you can actually, you know, look around at everything and hear it in binaural audio. And so it is a good way to experience something that's dead. Well, more importantly, on Horizons, you get to choose your ending. You don't want the same one every time. What's the point? I, I I think I always pick space. What? <sighs> Although now I think the uh, the desert is actually my favorite scene. Yeah, the desert's at awesome. The time I would always pick space. The desert ending. Screw was you great. underwater. Yeah. No one cares about you underwater. Underwater is pretty cool, but the desert one was the best. Yeah, Mesa Verde. And then um, World of Motion. Is there one of those? Do you know about one of those? Because I haven't seen one of those at all. I don't think so. Man, that would be crazy. That had like the most animatronics of any Disney ride ever. That was a lot of Mark Davis, right? Like mm-hmm. scenes, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a really good ride. I used to go so anyone out lot. there, anyone out there want to recreate <laughs> Horizon, uh, uh, World of Motion, maybe Horizons guy when you're done, move on. Yeah, just go next door. Do the one next door. <clears throat> Ang, when Universe of Energy is closed too, so while you're at it. Yeah, 45 minute VR ride. That one's easy. You just play the video sources for the most of it and then have one little section of dinosaurs. Does he have to recreate the flipping screens like on the original or are we doing the Ellen version? Uh, I think the flipping screens would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think so too. We might as well make two versions. The the hardest part's the dinosaurs. You can clone it and just change out the screens at the beginning (laughs) and the end. Could pick new or old. I am sick, kids. I am sorry. Ian's sick. Sick and tired of your crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will you guys in the Facebook group please behave? That's never going to happen. Yeah, I know. That's why I like it. It's fun in there. Um. So what else do you know of? I only know one that seemed to have stopped being any, any or it seemed to have stopped any kind of progress, but it looked awesome. And that was the Which virtual, one was that? that? That was Virtual Toad. That one looked oh. so good. And the guy just stopped. That one looked really like they it, it's recreated all the flats, but it looks like they're black light sensitive. Like they look really accurate. Yeah, everything. And the ride vehicle was spot on. In the queue, you could see the rock work from 20,000 leagues. 
like in the background. Yeah. It's so cool. I don't know why he stopped. I was loving it. I was checking I out was, it like weekly. I, the update stopped in 2008, it looked like. Which is sad. Any of everybody, go, go find him and email him and tell him how much we love it and we want it to finish. It's virtual hyphen toad.com. Yeah, seriously, guys. <laughs> virtual toad. It, it looks awesome. I really wish he finished it. Like he was, it looked like he um, built it all up from like wireframe base up, like really intricate. So it's neat. There was a picture, it was behind the scenes pictures of his progress, and the layout was built right on top of the blueprints. So, so cool. it's exact. Everything is like to scale perfectly on right on top of the blueprint so that it could get all the different ratios correct for room size. So good. If you guys like Toad much as I do, it's the Orlando one too, not the California one. Yeah, because it has two sides, right? Yeah, it's, it's definitely because in 20,000 leagues in the background, like I said, which is where it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, virtual hyphen Toad. What's funny is I went to these websites right before we started recording and the other one is horizons-resurrected.com. So <laughs> if you're doing a ride as VR, always have a hyphen in the middle, apparently. Yeah, apparently. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Virtual Toad guy, is it, please do more. His isn't even a downloadable thing. I think that's just an interactive QuickTime video. Yeah, so on far. The website I think it is so far. Because it's unfinished. Uh-huh. I mean, the Horizons one is unfinished, but you can still ride it. I remember riding it the first time. It was just the music and the backgrounds. And now that he's started to flesh it out. Or they're starting to flesh it out. They, I don't know if it's just know. one person or if it's a group. I don't know. Uh, any, what else you got? There's Defunct Land VR. Oh. Are they the good Defunct ones? Land VR Park is under construction from Kevin Perger. And I think this is this this has the because you know he's like the go-to source for closed rides yeah. Defunct Land YouTube series. I think this has the possibility to be like the the end all, the the like the unofficial official source for going to ride dead rides. Is he going to put if he actually gets this going? Is he going to put Brad's Brad Pitt's face on everything, too? For him? <laughs> the um, like you put out a video. I don't know when it was. It seems like forever ago where he showed off the sorcerer's hat in um, 360. Yeah. On YouTube. And like that was the first sample to like like we're, you know, recreating something that doesn't exist anymore. The sorcerer's hat. Is that like his only job is the YouTube thing? Because he does a I lot. I don't of, know. He does a lot of stuff on there. Well, he wrote a book. Yep, I know. Which is amazing. I think it's out of print, but you can get the digital version right now. Really good book. Love the hard co- cover. You know, he does the YouTube thing. He has the podcast. Has he not done a podcast episode in a while? I don't. He usually does interviews. I don't remember a, new, a recent one. I know he's been yeah. doing some interesting stuff on the YouTube channel, though, which is cool to check out. And he's been doing a lot of stuff on Inside the Magic. So, uh, but yeah, the Muppet series. Yep. So good. So good. Okay. But we're being distracted. The first land for his VR park, which, by the way, is defunctland.com slash VR hyphen park. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, oh <laughs> you got to have a hyphen oh, in there. Oh, boy. Oh, he showed clips, too, during one of the uh, live events during the... I think it was during Charity Land that I got to participate in uh, where they raised money for Give Kids the World Village. He showed clips of what they were working on. And it was like the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea submarine. Yeah, it was I, recreated perfectly. I, I'm not cool enough to be invited. I'm just a sidekick. So we don't discuss that show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it looks like the first land that will open is called the Dark Zone and will be like uh, dark rides. Cool. And from the images, it looks like Superstar Limo might be the first one to oh, open. Oh, man, of all of them. <laughs> of all the rides to pick. That's yeah, uh, fun. Has, it has like a great cult following. I mean, if you want to ride something. That's yeah, fun. Uh, that, now, that would be a fun one to do in VR. Uh, then maybe they can actually speed it up to the speed it was supposed to be. <laughs> I was going to say, is he going to do like if you if you had wings and stuff too in there? Of course. Yeah. Dream, I mean, dream flight. Th- there should be like a toggle switch before you enter. Like, would you like <laughs> if you had wings, dream flight, oh, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear or Ant-Man uh, <laughs> nano battle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty fun, though. That's a fun one to start with. Well, I'm just going by the images. 
it looked like America Sings or something was there too, because there was a circle building. It looked like it had the People Mover going through it, um, and the People Mover from Disneyland specifically. So those are all things that don't exist. So I imagine. And then one of them looked like the, to me, it looked like Mike and Sully to the rescue because it had that same kind of facade. But then I realized, oh, wait, that's the facade to Superstar Super Limo. Limo. So that's yeah. probably, yeah, that's probably what it is. Superstar Limo. Hey, at least Jackie Chan made it in there. <sighs> <sighs> hey, look, there's Drew Carey with maps to the stars homes. <laughs> All right. So what other VR stuff do we know about? Jurassic Explorer is a cool one. Oh, yeah. I looked at uh, Jurassic Explorer. Have you seen that? I haven't looked at this yet. But this I... is a, it's not like a closed ride or anything, but it's a way to experience uh, Jurassic World if it was an actual theme park. Which is cool, especially if you have like 3D or uh, virtual glasses. Yeah, see, that's Something. the thing. I don't have like a neat Oculus Rift or whatever. I, know. I don't even have the cheap cardboard ones you put your phone in. Nope. <laughs> so yeah. everything's on a desktop for me. Yep. But it's still like a step above uh, a YouTube video because you're like you're you get to pick and choose where you go. And I like Jurassic Explorer because I think it's created entirely in Unity. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, um, so it's it's almost like a video game. There's like he, he put uh, Michael, who created it and his team put in like little collectibles mm -hmm. so there's there's goals and you different uh you level up if you collect different things and it's all just a fan-made thing but the main street is meticulously recreated and all the different restaurants and shops and you can go into the um, t-rex kingdom and someone actually modeled some of the dinosaurs and there's i, th I think they're still working on it they're, they have patches you can update um and there's like mini games in there you can uh, drive around a gyrosphere. Uh, the Mosasaur do you get to amphitheater. Do you there. get to feed them? Like, do you get to give them the T Rex a goat? <laughs> and do you get to give like the Mosasaur a shark? I don't know. I, I would... think that happens automatically. You can't oh, do it yourself. No. But you you just watch it. No, that's that should be yeah. a that should be an achievement. I fed it. And I like <laughs> I like walking around though. I just like I'm a nerd for just being able to walk around a, a virtual theme park. So, I like that. Uh and Brad Jost is uh, has a role as a park announcer in the game. <laughs> nice. Our good friend from the Jurassic Park podcast actually has a little role. That's awesome. That's neat. Look at Brad go. So proud of you, buddy. All right, I'm out. I'm out. I don't know any others. Virtual Toad was it? Wait, hold on. I didn't see the the website for that one. That's that's uh, JurassicExplorer.wixsite.com. Oh, yeah. No hyphen. There's wait. No how you can how do you, but it's, but how it's are you going to succeed without a hyphen? It's a Wix site. Yeah. Go through all that trouble and then you put it on a Wix site. Oh, sorry, Wix. Well, it's also uploaded to a bunch of different like uh, game download areas. Maybe. Yeah, that's. Better. I don't know if it's on Steam, but I saw it in a couple places. Yeah, that's better. Sorry, Wix. Not a fan. Oh, no, don't put down Wix. They might be a sponsor one day. No, hey, if anybody's going to sponsor us, it's going to be Squarespace. Don't you listen to podcasts? That's true. That's true. Or Defunct Land. Should I use Squarespace? <laughs> so um, those are the only ones that I know of that are like standalone. And this is still a new thing. I think it would be really cool if the actual theme parks themselves took the time and care to make like a little releasable VR thing for their closed attractions, especially Disney. You know, if Disney came out with something that was like, here's a 3d, you know, ride through of uh, the great movie ride with all the animatronics and stuff, I'd be a little less sad about it completely going away. Yeah. Well, isn't Chapek trying to build that then that new area, the play, the play area or whatever is supposed to be like interchangeable. Uh huh. So they could do it in there, just feature different rides at different times. Well, I don't even want it in the parks, although that kind of, that would be kind of neat if yeah, they moving seats saying. and stuff. I'm just saying, you know, just a downloadable. I would go to the store and buy. They used to make um, the Walt Disney World Explorer CD-ROM. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it had like interactive stuff. And you kind of look around at the map. And um, it wasn't like you walk around the park because it was still before that time. But you kind of zoom around the park on the map and then pick a thing it'll give you facts and a little video clip if it was something like that and you can actually ride rides um that don't exist anymore 
I would totally buy that. Yeah, I would download it from cool. Steam. I would pay thirty nine ninety five for per ride. I don't care, Disney. Think about that. It probably wouldn't be that hard for them to do either, especially on no, some of the newer rides, the recent rides that they replaced. Probably well, wouldn't be that hard at all. Things like Slinky Dog Dash and stuff, the newer rides, they completely model in 3D. They oh, have yeah. that like dome where they walk around in VR to see the sight lines and everything. Mm-hmm. So later down the, ra- the line, when these rides close, they'll have 3D models of everything and all the physics are ready to go. So close down Slinky Dog Dash in 20 years and give us a CD-ROM or beam it to our brains or whatever technology they have in the future. <laughs> and we'll pay with our world credits or whatever m- currency we have in the future. <laughs> and I think it is the future of dead theme park attractions. Yeah, everyone's got nostalgia for theme park attractions. Just different generations mm-hmm. miss different rides. So, And maybe that might be the only way for us to, to be able to experience them because eventually there'll be lawsuits brought against people who do the VR thing as a fan. <laughs> and there'll be nothing left but the real companies. I think there was one. I, I'm, I'm so out of the loop on that, but I, I saw a couple headlines. There was like a Star Trek thing. Oh, really? Um, where, where they did, like they recreated some... One of the, I don't know which story it is or what it is, but right before the new CBS show came out, they ended up getting a cease and desist on their VR um, Star Trek experience thing. Oh, that's a shame. And it is because a lot of work goes into it. But, you know, when you're building something that's, you know, not licensed or approved, I I guess that's always a possibility. But at the same time, you know, it's like uh, when you re-edit Star Wars into the original cut, you have to put it on the back channels. It goes to the what? dark web. What happens? You don't release that I don't, publicly. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a different edit from the original that came out in like the eight, 1979 and 80s? No, huh? What? About. No. Yeah, no. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. 1997 or whatever never what? happened. Never heard 98? of it. Mm, never heard of it. No. <laughs> You mean like when they put a weird looking CG? Um, I'm just, giant, I'm just thinking. Never mind. Of, hmm? I'm just thinking of Han Solo's head awkwardly moving to the side, and then, <laughs> and then him shooting. It's so Greedo bad. Greedo shot first. I don't care about the cannon <laughs> anymore. Greedo shot first. I don't even care who shot first. I just care about bad, bad CG. So bad. So much of it. Seriously. Um, like Jabba, when his eyes bug out of his head when Solo steps on him, can we just? Yeah, exactly. And then he pops up. He right, Han Solo raises up awkwardly, just like like someone's holding a mouse and going whoop, <laughs> <laughs> click. Okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. never happened. I don't know what he's talking about. All right. So part of the reason I wanted to bring this up is that in the virtual world of Second Life, oh boy, I'm sure all of you have heard of this. Oh Second boy, you life. went there. You went there. It's uh, so it's a virtual world. It's kind of like World of Warcraft. If you didn't have uh, game elements or a point, <laughs> or Warcraft, <laughs> <laughs> or Warcraft, it's kind of like a chat room. But you have an avatar that walks around, so you can ch- talk to people. Um, even for the like the first five or six years, there wasn't even a voice way. You had to use a separate program to to talk with a headset, and then they integrated a way you can actually talk through it. Um, was that Ventrilo? Is that what everybody better. used? Huh? Ventrilo? Was that what everybody used? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm old. I couldn't I, afford I, a headset. <laughs> I used something like that for World of Warcraft, I think. I don't remember. So anyway. I joined Second Life in 2006, I want to say. I don't immediately know. Immediately you became ago. a vampire and looked for willing sacrifices. or victims. No, I just oh. look like me, like a really skinny version of me. <laughs> okay. That's in my defense, though, I was I was skinnier back then. In my defense, that's a, but not that, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> not myself, <laughs> well, a lot of people do that. They're like, you know, I'm. I, this is what I wish I looked like, or um, this is like a younger, hotter version of me. That's what Second Life is about. You know, it's like, a, you know, you, but also you could be a dragon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why would you just do that? You could be a dragon if you're going to do that. You just play The Sims. I have other. <laughs> that's true. I have other avatars. That um, like one's just always a velociraptor. Like, why not? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's see, that makes more sense. That sounds and like I go shopping and I look around places and I'm exploring and everyone's like, oh, God, there's a raptor here. 
that's and I'm like, oh, that's me. And you press a button and on the heads up display and it like roars and people and bites at people. It's pretty fun. Um, yeah, see, that's the Alicia we all know and love. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, I have a business to run there, so I had to look like a normal human for most of the time. Oh, boy. So the reason I bring it up is um, I recreated the Back to the Future ride a few years mm-hmm. back uh, on my private island that I rent there. Uh, and it's neat. It's <laughs> like I, re- I built... Uh, a miniature, a smaller version of like the Institute of Future T- Technology that as I mm-hmm. knew it from uh, Universal Studios Florida. And I even have like the pre-show video playing outside and the, like the, well, it's not, I don't play the outside one. I just skip right to the, the, the main, the, the one also where bye bye. Yes. <laughs> the one where he like, he pulls down a Biff Tannen picture on his maps. Like why yeah, does so Doc good. Brown always have a Biff Tannen picture holding a wrench ready to go at any time? <laughs> I've never questioned that until recently. That's he's so good. like Biff Tannen. Like, you know, he's a troublemaker from 1955. What's he doing here in the present? What are you doing with a picture of him on your wall? <laughs> you weirdo. Is this a problem you encounter often enough to necessitate a photo of him? on a pull down map. Um, so after that pre-show, like you go, it has a timer on the wall and it says next uh, ride starts in like 90 seconds or whatever. And when the timer runs down, you go into the holding room and then I have the other pre-show play, but I like recreated the stuff in the little holding rooms. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Um, so like the, the hoverboard that's connected to the little charging station behind glass. Um, there was always a dinosaur poster behind the door because they were kind of like, preluding to the t-rex scene later on so there's a there's always the dinosaur poster but then like all the little stuff in the on the cork board like uh the photo from the old west with them by the clock tower the newspaper clipping like whatever i can remember that was in that little pre-show room that's and then you sit and you watch the the pre-show that's a lot of stuff i put a lot of effort into it that's good so then the pre-show ends and you go into the next uh the main room and you hear that little sound that goes do 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so trying to really hit the nostalgia feels for anyone who remembers the ride. Uh, and you sit down and I, I didn't make an eight per- passenger DeLorean. It's only a four passenger DeLorean. I'm sorry. I only have so much time. <laughs> Plus, I didn't want to ruin the view for the people in the back. <laughs> um, so you pick one of four seats. And to do this, I just purchased a DeLorean that someone recreated and sold like, cause you can make and sell anything you want in second life. And I don't have the time to sit there and make a DeLorean. So I bought someone else's DeLorean and I turned it into a convertible and I gave it more seats. Um, and I added all the proper displays and stuff. And what's cool about back to the future, the ride is that, uh, so many people were putting up like, uh, really crappy VHS recordings of the ride on YouTube that eventually universal just released a, high quality original source material video version yeah. of the ride on like DVD extras and stuff. Yeah. But like a third of the screen is blocked because they put the display. There's actually two versions and you can get a full screen version without the stuff on the bottom. Oh, that's good. I've only ever seen the one with the, the, the third, the bottom third. Yeah. The one on the DVD shows the stuff at the bottom. Um, but what's neat is I use that version because then all my little screens in the car happen in real time so i'm able to have the speedometer actually works the little screen with doc brown talking to you works that's cool and i originally had the ride vehicle moving but then i realized in second life when you have a pov out your eyes and you're looking you can't tell if you're moving or not (laughs) you're in front of a screen and you can't tell you're moving so all it was doing was just kind of like creating lag and using way too much processing power for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So I turned the moving off and I only got like a one scene into it, but I did do the fog effects. Oh, cool. So that's like the cool. transitions between the, the, the different parts, whenever there was a fog effect, even that one that's in the ice age, that's in, that's not even a transition between time travel because it's like you're in the ice age. So I got every fog effect perfectly timed with the ride. Um, so yeah, it's, and it's like a low quality. I originally had it at an incredibly high quality um, video version, but then I realized people's internet wasn't good enough, and I don't want to pay for streaming video. So right now it's <laughs> that kind of a low, it's kind of a low quality video, but it still works. And That's it's good. all, it's all, and it's in a loop, so people could be in a pre-show, people could be on the ride, and it's just a constantly going, nonstop. Um, 
anyone in Second Life, I'll put the link in the description so you can go ride it. But the thing is, I'm closing it. Why? I have to close it down because I can't afford to pay for the private island anymore. Oh. And I'm really sad. And that's what made me think we need to talk about it because it's going to go bye-bye. And I have nowhere else to put it. Um, it's been there, uh, I want to say like six or seven, eight years. Eight years. It's eight yeah. and it's going bye-bye now? It's going bye-bye now. Oh, that's sad. So, um, if probably wants to see in it. like, yeah, what is it? In July, August, probably within two months, maybe a month. It's going to go bye bye. Go see it, guys. So, create an account at secondlife.com. Oh, boy. Download the viewer. Learn how to use Second Life. Go to, go to Alicia Stella Design. Find the Back to the Future. Search Back to the Future ride. I can't imagine there's more than one. See, that's the thing, too, is that there's a ton of Disney World stuff or Disneyland stuff in Second Life, but there was no Universal stuff. So. And if I had more time, I wanted to make more. I was going to do Confrontation. Oh. Um, and then when they closed Jaws, I was like, oh, I got to do Jaws. Uh, but I just don't have the time and I don't have the land. And that's the thing is you have to pay for land to be able to build things. And it's just too much monthly to pay just to build stuff that's, you know, exciting for me. But <laughs> So if you want to see those lands stay or be built, then you can send. No, just kidding. <laughs> just send $200 to... <laughs> Every month. Oh, man. <clears throat> but what is neat is, <laughs> okay, I'm going to, let's just, let's just fully unload the nerdness. <laughs> let's just take 10 minutes and fully unload the nerdness. It's not a theme park podcast. Um, well, I, my, I, I needed an island. Life. I needed an island for my store and I really like Universal Studios and theme park stuff. Oh. So I kind of built it to look like old Hollywood. I built the Brown Derby. I built the Pantage, Pantages Theater. Um, I have a big Hollywood sign, but I didn't build it based on real Hollywood. I based it on Universal Studios Florida's version of Hollywood. <laughs> so amazing. it's all like replicas. Oh, that's amazing. Of, <laughs> because that's what I know. And it's just easier that way. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know about this fully. Un we're, we're on a theme park podcast talking about Second Life. No, but we're talking about theme park stuff in VR. I know. But and I, this is I'm VR saying, I've like, been doing for a while. Yeah, lots of nerdy stuff going on at once, which is awesome. I condone all of it. <laughs> um, another thing, too, while you're registering for Second Life and logging in and searching for Back to the Future, don't miss out on my Halloween ride, which I unfortunately won't make it through to another Halloween, but I leave it open year round now. Uh oh. Because that's also on the land. It's hidden up in the air, so you don't notice it. You have to teleport to it. Um, my mm. friend and I started doing a Halloween ride every year for almost 10 years. Ooh. And um, one year we actually stopped and took it all down and built a pirate ride. And I recreated the scene from Pirates of the Caribbean where the, the, the fort and the boat are fighting each other and the cannonballs are going off. Mm -hmm. And I actually recreated it perfectly with all the splashes and everything in the water. That's too cool. Um. I, that unfortunately didn't last. I, I I should have kept that up. It's better than the Halloween ride. What's the Halloween <laughs> ride based on? The Halloween ride is um, like a collection of different sequences. Like you go through different scenes. The the ride vehicle kind of looks like the Doom buggy. Mm -hmm. um, and it moves pretty slow because I wanted to time out the scenes better. It used to move really smoothly, but now it's kind of like jerky. It's like, but because uh, that's the way Second Life works. But anyway, you go through different scenes and because it's a collection of so many different things and it's like 10 minutes long, of course, naturally, I named it the greatest Halloween ride in the world ever. Mm. Pretty proud <laughs> the of that original ride, huh? sign, <laughs> the original The original sign actually had the word ever like on a piece of plywood attached to it, written in paint, like the sign didn't hold the whole name. That's perfect. That was a joke. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But at the time, there was nothing else like that. Now there's actually a lot of Halloween rides every year all around so it's not as original as it was but a couple of years ago I, ta I added a tag to it i added extra scenes to the end mm -hmm. um so this ride it goes through like some basic normal stuff like uh there's a graveyard i got the haunted mansion music playing because that's what i do <laughs> like i i 
one of the later versions I could put onboard audio. So I was like, I'm gonna put music in every scene. Um, and I maybe <laughs> went overboard. This is before I was reporting on theme park stuff. You know, I've always been a theme park nerd. I've just also been a second life nerd also. Uh, so you go through like uh, a graveyard scene, you go into a mansion, there's portraits on the wall that are changing. Uh, you go into a room filled with scary clowns because clowns, you go into a hallway with like these razor blade or these giant uh, saw blades that cut you up Be- because and blood sprays everywhere. Because, because clowns, because I, I like all these reasons because clowns, because why not? Yeah. Keep and going. Then, What's next? Um, the next scene I added uh, more recently, a couple years ago, uh, it's the original uh, Frankenstein and it has the original music Ooh. playing and uh, there's lightning out the window and uh, the scientist is there and he's like, it's alive. It's alive. That's too um, good. Although I, yeah. And like, uh, it's got the, the Tesla coil thing and it makes the sound. It goes, <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's how, you know, it's a real Frankenstein scene. And then it turns around and it goes into another scene and it's the Bates motel. And this is like inspired by the old Hitchcock show at Universal because it's got a force perspective uh, house in the background, mm-hmm. like up on the hill, like the stairs closer to you are full size. And then they get smaller and smaller and smaller as they get to the house, which is actually like a third scale. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really proud of the way that all came out. And there's a full size corner of the Bates Motel. And you can see in the window, there's like the newspaper with money on the bed. And then you go into the bathroom and she's being murdered by mom. Nice. Nice. Um, yes. Uh, and then there's a couple other scenes. You go underwater at one, you know, depths of fear. I totally invented that. Uh, <laughs> and then you go through a portal. And this is where I added a huge new section. Originally, it would just cut straight to the end, um, which was War of the Worlds, because that's like my favorite Halloween story that War of the Worlds played on Halloween back in the day. And people thought the world was ending. Mm-hmm. So I have a world War of the Worlds ending on my Halloween ride. Uh, and then you die and you go to hell because all rides should end in hell, right? So you end with Toad. Okay, cool. I'm good with that. <laughs> I think all rides should end that way. Yeah, it's the perfect that. ending. All right. So, but I added like three extra scenes or several extra scenes. And one of them is that you're in the hallways and you turn a corner and it's the halls from uh, The Shining and ah. the, the twins are there. And it's like, come and play with us, yes. Danny, Red forever Rock. and ever. And there's like the. It, 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 it blood on the walls disappears and reappears, but then you turn back the way you were coming and the hallway is longer because the movie is so disorienting on purpose. I actually made the hallway uh, like a wall remove while you were looking the other way. So it's like, Whoa, where'd that hallway come from? And then you go down the hall some more and then you turn again and then the elevator is open and blood spills out everywhere. That's awesome. in slow motion. That's amazing. Which, which is not easy in second life. So like it's weird particle effects and uh, that, chair starts floating towards you at one point <laughs> i try to make it just like the movie um, and then you turn back and you go through some doors and this is where i maybe went off the rails <laughs> maybe you you Wait. go through a dark tunnel <laughs> i'm not off the rails yet <laughs> <laughs> so you go through a dark tunnel and uh spoilers for anyone who's going to actually ride this ride and enjoy second life if you could figure it out it's got a huge learning curve because the viewer is terrible but if you if you go ride it maybe spoiler alert uh you go and you see a cabin in the woods no way And it's like cricket sounds it's dark out you're like totally outside all of a sudden it's crazy you go from this tiny hallway to like this big open outdoor space there's a camper parked out front there's a cabin in the woods you go through the door you see a fireplace you see uh, a, a wolf head mounted on the wall mm-hmm. And you go into the basement through an open door on the floor and the music starts playing and you see all this stuff and it's completely cluttered and there's knickknacks. There's a little music box with a ballet dancer. And uh, so I, have you figured out what it is yet? Yeah, I've seen Cabin in the Woods. Keep going. <laughs> uh, so I own then it. You, you, there's a, you turn and there's a door open and a, like a little control box is all malfunctioning and there's parts of a zombie laying there. Uh, and you go into this hallway with elevators and all of a sudden it's like ding and all the elevators open up and it's complete chaos and the every single thing in that scene uh ripping apart the people happens in an instant that's awesome there's like the, oh, yeah. the tree sticking out of the elevator one elevator's gushing blood uh there's a robot song someone there's a bat giant bat flying through the air uh the werewolf is there the kraken what else the was kraken there? 
they, there's a giant snake. The giant snake is there. Yeah, you see, I think you see for some, I, you remember, I remember a, cra- a Kraken leg flying across at some point, like an octopus thing. The tentacle. I don't think, oh, I don't think I have that, but I have the molesting tree, which is how it was listed in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the, in the, if you watch the, <laughs> if you watch the behind the scenes video, they say, we call this the molesting tree. That makes sense. So I have the molesting tree. That makes sense. It's just like, yeah, coming out of the elevator and, uh, Oh, and the uh, the horde of zombies slowly wandering out. That happens. Oh, the too. family. Um, not them. The the, the normal zombies. Oh, okay. The the in the scene, there's there's just a lot of zombies at the end of the movie because they're 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 like filler bad guys. Of course. So then you start moving to the side and you see behind the the elevator and there's like a cube and another cube and then more cubes and they're all filled with different monsters and then you move backward and it's like zooming out and there's a hundred cubes all filled with different creatures and stuff and it's like every other scene on this ride has just one scene but this one just keeps going (laughs) (laughs) and then you you turn around completely and you're in the hallways and it's like the administration building and it's like the the chemicals room and it's like all the different offices complete chaos is going on um there's monsters everywhere. You see through a window, there's the, the clown with the guy tied to the chair. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you go into the control room and spend a lot of time making the control room. <laughs> <laughs> All the different screens showing different things. Um, and then you go to the far end of the control room. Merman's totally killing that guy and blood spurting out of his blowhole. <laughs> That's great. Then you go into, you go through the big giant metal uh, safe door and it's like the ancient area. And uh, then the, the roof starts caving in and there's all kinds of rocks falling. And it's like totally the end of the movie where they failed and um, it's like everything's falling apart. And then the werewolf shows up at the last second for a big scare. And there you go. That's, that's me losing my mind and going too far. Sounds amazing. <laughs> everybody go look. And then you go into the war of the worlds. Oh, everybody go ride that because that sounds awesome. I, I hope to I'm going to try to videotape it and put it on YouTube before it goes bye bye forever, because I spent a lot of time on it. Um, just adding little things here or there over the years. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Um, older versions, older versions and different because we had it at different places. This is just where it ended up. But we had um, like scenes with Freddy Krueger or scenes with Jason and other things. Um, never did a child's play, though. I've seen other ones in Second Life that did child's play. I think that was pretty cool. Evil Dead. That would be cool groovy exactly so another thing though and i haven't done it in a while but i used to like exploring just searching second life for theme park stuff and people have recreated like one place did almost all of disneyland it's insane that's like the whole of disneyland park in second life recreated the thing is it's not to the level of detail of something like horizons resurrected or the virtual toad yeah it's more of like a lot of um like just here's a photograph of a section instead of recreating it, you know, mm-hmm. in actual objects, they just kind of put up a photograph on the wall and like that replaces it. But they, they, the, the haunted mansion is pretty good. This one place just has a couple select rides and the castle. And then every 10 minutes there's a fireworks show. I think that's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. Um, but they rebuilt, they built the, the tower of terror and it's Ooh, really good. The Orlando one, like really good. Completely works. Orlando, huh? Orlando one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the real one. And it's got like two sides and one side is fake and has like fake um, people that are always screaming. Um, but then the other side you actually can ride. But it's like perfect recreation. And they did a haunted mansion that's really high quality. And um, I haven't been there in years. The last time I was there, they were working on Pirates of the Caribbean. So I'm going to go visit later on today, there see if it's go. done. That's awesome. Hopefully they're still around because it's really expensive to rent land in Second Life. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were gone. But. Um, but yeah, it's it's neat that there is a place like this that's kind of like a playground for people who want to build things. Which is you know, awesome. It's like a sandbox. Yeah. You know, I make fun of it, but it is neat that something like this exists. Very cool. Everybody go you check know, that out. So that I can be a Velociraptor riding Haunted Mansion of if course, I want. Of course, because that makes total sense. I don't know why I wouldn't. <laughs> why not? That's awesome. Go check that out, guys, before it's gone. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe one day the land will get cheaper and I'll build Jaws. Because I really want to. And I'll keep the Back to the Future thing in my inventory just in case. Oh, so cool. But it's definitely going to go away in two months. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you just got to learn how to play a kind of annoyingly difficult game to master. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's not really a game. And if you press um, the page up, you fly. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, that's a game. Why not? It's enough of a game. It barely, <laughs> barely, barely. But I, if you fly, that's pretty much a game. 
I mean, it's not really is it if it's not really a game if it doesn't have an objective. I guess the objective is just like do whatever you want. <laughs> it's just open world with real money. Oh boy. <laughs> you convert your money into a fake currency so you don't know that you're spending real money, you know. That sounds dangerous. And it is dangerous. Next thing you know, you're building a recreation of Disneyland. Mm, exactly. <laughs> or back to the future ride. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really proud of my Pantages theater. You can't go in or anything. It's just a facade, but I built that whole thing. And then I was like, this thing looks just like it. And then I saw the pictures of the real one in Hollywood. And I was like, darn it. It's not. It's just flat. It's not on a corner like this. Turns out the real Pantages theater is like right in a strip mall. And the one at <laughs> Universal Studios Florida is on a corner. And it's totally different. Still looks cool. So, it does. It does. All right, kids. My brown derby is a diner. You should check it out. Ooh. All right, that's all for this episode of the Park Stop Patreon Premium Podcast Hour. <laughs> Tell her what to name it, please. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, and remember that nothing's really, no one's ever really gone. <laughs> what <laughs> like, is going no on? No ride's ever really gone. <laughs> That's the that's from the Star Wars preview. No, no rides oh. ever really gone as long as we have VR to oh, re-experience boy. it. Or force ghosts of the ride. I don't know where we're going with this. Yes, yes. <sighs> okay, bye, kids. Ah, oh, we almost made it.